Hello to all movie enthusiasts. Our film today is called Train to Pusan and it tells the story of a train full of zombies, and a group of humans trying to survive. The reason for the zombie outbreak is revealed to be related to a chemical leak that occurred in a nearby factory, and the humans are trying to escape the spreading infection. The film begins with a driver on the road who is stopped by a medical team to sanitize his car due to the chemical leak. He questions why they are sanitizing all the cars and stopping everyone, and one of the medical team members explains that the chemical leak is a major threat to the environment and they are trying to prevent the spread of the infection. As the driver continues his journey, he accidentally hits a deer and stops to investigate. He discovers the deer is dead and realizes that something is not right when the deer suddenly rises and walks away. He then arrives at the factory where the chemical leak occurred and meets the executive manager named Sok who orders his employee to destroy all the documents related to the incident to prevent a scandal. Sok's employee, named Ken, agrees to follow the order and leaves. Sok then heads home and meets his ex-wife who asks him to take care of their daughter. Sok refuses and argues that he has to work all day and doesn't have time for his daughter, so he leaves her with her mother. Later that day, it is revealed to be their daughter's birthday and Sok comes to visit her with a gift. However, the daughter is disappointed because the gift is the same as the one he gave her last year, and she feels neglected by her father. She demands to go to her mother's house, but Sok promises to take her the following week. However, she insists on leaving immediately and threatens to leave on her own if he doesn't take her. Siuk agrees with her and says, okay, I'll do it. He tells her that he will take her to her mother's tomorrow, but due to his daughter's insistence, he changes his clothes and tells her that he will take her now. He goes to change his clothes and his mother comes in and tells him that his daughter is upset with him because he didn't come to listen to her in school as he promised, and the party is today. Then his mother shows him the video of his daughter's performance at the party today, and he watches her struggling with her recitation because of her emotional state. Siuk feels guilty and takes his daughter, dresses her up, and takes her in the car to her mother's house. On the way, they see a big factory on fire, and many fire trucks rushing to put out the fire. The factory was where Siuk worked, and they cannot continue in their car due to the fire. Siuk then takes his daughter and they board a train to take her to her mother. While on the train, an employee named Kin tells him that there was a major riot in front of the factory because of the fire. Siuk knows that he needs to calm them down and take responsibility for what happened. Before the train starts moving, there is a girl who seems infected with a disease and she gets on the train in a strange way, unable to support herself, moving like a dog, and her body is convulsing and her bones are breaking. She had been infected with the disease that broke out in the factory, and she was coughing and spitting out a lot of foam from her mouth. However, the train door closes before the guard notices her and the train begins to move. Later, there are many riots on the platform at the train station. At the same time, Siuk's daughter sees a man attacking another man in a brutal way and trying to eat him. She is shocked and realizes that her father, who was sleeping, did not notice what was happening. However, Siuk is still sleeping, and at that time, the train manager tells him that he went to talk to the train official about a girl who had gone to the bathroom and had not come out. Then Siuk's daughter, whose name is Sue, gets up from her seat, worried, and goes with the train manager and employee to the bathroom to see what's happening. At that time, there is a man sitting on the floor of the bathroom, crying and saying that we will all die, and the disease has infected the whole country. There are only a few moments left, and the whole world will turn into zombies, and none of us will survive. Then the girl who had entered the train with a disease like that of the zombies enters, walking on the ground, in a difficult state, her eyes all white, and suddenly falls to the ground unconscious. The train hostess comes to help her, but she cannot move from her place and cannot lean at all. At this time, Sok wakes up while sitting on a chair and receives a call from his employee, Ken, who informs him that the situation is getting worse. The world is in a state of chaos, and there are many cases of people being infected in the city and around the world. The police and army have been deployed to secure the country due to a chemical leak that occurred from Sok's factory. Sok doesn't care about the situation and quickly ends the call to go search for his daughter, Sue. But at that moment, chaos erupts in a car when a zombie bites the hostess who was trying to treat her. The hostess turns into a zombie, and she and the zombie that bit her begin attacking everyone in the car. When they bite someone, that person also turns into a zombie and joins in the attack. There is a great deal of chaos in the car as everyone tries to move to another car to protect themselves from the zombies. Sok enters this car and sees that everyone in it has turned into a zombie, including his daughter, who is being attacked. Sok takes his daughter and runs quickly to other cars in front of them, with all the zombies chasing after them. Finally, they enter a car and lock themselves in with others. The zombies come and bang on the windows, trying to break them and get inside to attack them and turn them into zombies. 
However, there is a woman in the car who suggests they put newspapers on the windows because zombies instinctively attack what they see. If they don't see anyone, they won't attack or be aggressive towards them. This idea works, and the zombies move away from them. At this time, everyone in the car is still in shock and unable to understand how the infection spread and why everyone turned into zombies. They are all afraid for their families and loved ones who are outside in the city. Meanwhile, the driver of the car, who knows everyone in the car, informs them that the situation is getting worse, and the zombies have spread throughout the area. All the other stations they were supposed to stop at are now filled with zombies, and it's too dangerous to continue. Sock's wife calls him, and he reassures her after what happened. They decide to stop at the next station so that everyone can find a safe place to hide and survive. But then suddenly, Sock's mother began to turn into a zombie and her voice started to change second by second until she fully transformed into a zombie and bid farewell to her son. Sock was very angry with her because he saw her as the reason for all the troubles that happened in his factory. After that, they arrived at the next station on the train, and many people wanted to get off there, including a man who asked the driver to stop. However, when they arrived at the station, they all changed their minds because they found the station to be a massacre happening between humans and zombies, and there were many humans begging the train driver to close them in to ride the train and save their lives. But they couldn't finish their talk, as the zombies attacked them from every direction and could kill them completely and turn them into zombies like them. At that time, all the people on the train opened their phones to know what was happening in the world, and then the world was turned upside down due to the spread of the disease in Korea. The zombies filled the whole place, and the world was deteriorating from bad to worse, with many people in the city fully transformed into zombies, leaving only a few humans trying to survive. Also, the Korean Minister of Health announced that they are now in a state of emergency and must take cover in any shelters or stores, so as not to deal with any zombies present and also avoid turning into zombies themselves. He requested that all citizens close themselves properly and prevent their exit except for the utmost necessity and that they store a large amount of food and drink in their homes so as not to go out during this period, as they would turn into complete zombies if they did. After that, the train's commander spoke to them again and informed the passengers that they would get off at the next station and stay there, as he had communicated with the leadership there and informed them that the army and police were securing the place and that there were no zombies present, and this was the only safe station on the entire line. Here. When Sok found out that they would get off and that the army had arrived and secured the place, he called his friend in the army and asked him to find a place for him and his daughter to secure them well. But at that time, the commander of the army informed Sok that they would all be put in quarantine until they were sure and reassured that none of them were infected with the zombie infection. However, Sok insisted on putting them in a place far away from everyone else so that they could be in a safe place away from all the zombies, and he would never forget this service. Then, the train commander informed him that when he gets off, he should walk on a certain path, which he described to him, and he would wait for him there and put him and his daughter in a safe place. After that, they got off the train and walked on the path that the military commander had described to them, and as they were walking, all the people were surprised by the second path that Sok and his daughter took, and they were walking alone. However, when the second group of passengers got off, they found the army waiting for them, but to their surprise, the army had also turned into zombies, and they started attacking all the passengers. The passengers started to scatter and run away from their path, and the army that had turned into zombies managed to attack and turn a large number of passengers into zombies as well. After that, a group of zombies came towards Sok and his daughter, Sue. There was a zombie already about to bite Sue, but one person managed to save her by hitting the zombie. And then he stood up and hit the zombie that was attacking Sok and took them both and ran with them to a closed place far from the zombies that filled the station. At that moment, they locked themselves in and ran towards the train. They got on the train and locked themselves in the car they were in to prevent the zombies from reaching them. However, at that time, the station looked like a big massacre was happening because the zombies had spread throughout the station. They were jumping onto the train from above and onto the car with the passengers who had just entered, including Sok and his daughter Sue. Meanwhile, the passengers asked the train conductor to contact the train captain so that he could move with them away from the station filled with zombies. The conductor contacted the train captain, and he agreed to move with the passengers. At that moment, Sok and the man who saved his daughter were standing, blocking the glass door from the zombies to prevent them from attacking them. However, the zombies managed to break the glass door and attack them as well, but they all ran after the train that started moving. In the last moment, Sok managed to get on the train, but the man who saved his daughter could not get on because the zombies were attacking him from all sides. However, the man was a fierce fighter and managed to kill all the zombies attacking him. In the end, he was able to get on the train and save Sok and his daughter, and they all got on the train. The train moved with great speed and left the station. 
At that time, the passengers were divided into several cars. The problem was that there were a large number of zombies in the other closed cars. Sok was trying to communicate with his daughter to find out which car she was in. At that moment, he noticed that his daughter was talking to the man who saved her, whose name was Sang. He found out from her that they were in a room in car 13, which had zombies in it. But at that time, a large number of people had discovered that there were many zombies among them in the train cars, and they were trying to deal with them calmly so that none of the zombies would sense them and attack them. At that time, Su was with Sang's wife, who was in the same car as Sok. Sok and Sang wanted to find a way to reach their wives and daughters, but the problem was that there were many zombies in the middle, ready to attack them. Here, Sok, and Sang, along with many other passengers on the train, decided to go and rescue the other normal people in the zombie car. But they had to prepare themselves well and arm themselves to be able to deal with the zombies and reach the car with Sang's wife and Sok's daughter. They opened the zombie car, and they were joined by another group of baseball players. They entered the car with the baseball players, but some of them turned into zombies. They started attacking them heavily, but at that moment, the train entered a tunnel, and the zombie movement stopped because they couldn't see in the darkness. However, Sok used this opportunity to his advantage and played a sound on his phone, causing the zombies to run towards the sound. He threw the phone to the end of the carriage and he and Sang were able to enter the carriage where their families were. The plan worked, and they were able to reunite with their loved ones safely. However, they needed to return to the safe carriage where they had originally been. Sok and Sang had to fight their way back through the zombies, but they managed to make it back to the safe carriage with their families. They finally reached their destination, but they had to face the reality that the world had changed, and they were no longer safe from the dangers of the zombie apocalypse. And they started walking towards the designated area for the passenger's luggage, to reach their safe car. They were walking very cautiously because any mistake could kill them. But at that moment, one of them fell in the middle of the zombies, and the zombies sensed him and started attacking them again. However, Sok and Sang worked together and with Sang's wife, they ran very quickly to get into their safe car. But the passengers on the other side refused to open the door for them because they did not believe that they were still ordinary humans and had not turned into zombies. So Sok and Sang broke the door open to get into their car. After they got in, a large number of zombies attacked them, and Sok and Sang closed the door to prevent them from entering. Then one of them managed to get his arm through the door, and Sang decided to sacrifice himself and ask Sok to take care of his wife and daughter and protect them while he tried to fight off the zombies as much as he could until they entered the other car. At first, Sok refused, but with Sang's insistence, he agreed and ran after the other car and locked himself in after taking Sang's wife and daughter. And here, Sang sacrificed himself and let the zombies who continued to fight him eat him all up. Because of their large number, they overpowered him and bit him. After that, there was a lot of chaos and commotion in their car because the zombies started entering their safe car, and the zombies had already penetrated it. However, there was an old woman among them who could not enter the car because she was too scared, and her legs couldn't carry her. So, she surrendered to the zombies who also ate her. After they entered the safe car, Sok ran towards the man who had locked the door and refused to let them in and started hitting and fighting him because he left them alone and only thought of himself. But the man knew what would ensure that they had not turned into zombies and shouted at all the passengers, telling them that they could all be zombies. He asked all the passengers not to mix with them and to lock them in a separate place. And indeed, the remaining passengers refused to deal with them because they were afraid for their lives and locked them in a separate place. But at that moment, the sister of the woman who had surrendered to the zombies stood up and opened the door that separated them from the zombies to sacrifice herself and save the other passengers who could not protect her sister. And a lot of chaos ensued because of the zombies, and very few survived. After that, Sok contacted the people at the company and realized that everything that had happened was because of the project they were working on at the factory, and he felt guilty. Here, the train conductor asked the passengers to get off because they had reached the end of the line. Before they got off, the train next to them overturned, and a large number of zombies came out of it. The train manager threw the baseball team's girl to the zombies to save his own life. Then the girl turned into a zombie, and her boyfriend also turned into a zombie because the manager had also turned into one. In the end, they deserved it. Then Sok, his daughter, and Sang's wife ran to catch another train on a different line to escape. But behind them, a large number of zombies start to attack them, but Sok manages to push them off the train and escape with the train safely. However, on this train, there was the director who had turned into a zombie and started attacking Sok. He managed to bite Sok's hand and turn him into a zombie, but before Sok fully turned, he threw the director off the train. Sok's wife and daughter managed to get into the safe car, and he asked them to take care of each other. He went outside until he turned into a zombie and remembered all his memories with his daughter, Sue. 
he threw himself off the train and died. His daughter was screaming behind the train's door, crying because her father had died and left her alone in a world full of zombies. Later, they arrived in Pusan, where the military was waiting for them. After confirming that they were not zombies, the military took them with them and protected them. And that's where the movie ends. <laughs>